I've shared some of my thoughts before about the J. Cole thing and I want to share them again because I'm still perturbed by the whole situation. It's still fucking confusing me and still made me a bit upset, especially judging by how much of a big fan I am of his. So I need to get this off my chest in general. So I'm sure most of you know, J. Cole got up on stage during his um, Dreamville Festival and basically apologized to Kendrick Lamar for dissing him back, even though Kendrick Lamar dissed him first. So let's actually play the clip and then I'm going to give you some of my thoughts and opinions about it and why this is so disappointing being a big J. Cole fan myself and just in general being a fan of hip hop and wanting to see these artists spar in a friendly way so that we'd get the best quality music. Um, let's see what J. Cole had to say. So I'm so proud of that project except for one part. It's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people wanna hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, nah, don't do that. But I gotta keep it 100 with y'all, right? Don't keep it 100. I damn near had keep a relapse, yourself. right? Jesus Christ. Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world and I got my niggas like, what you gonna do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, look how scared he boy, looks. I must have had a look thousand how scared he looks, Oh my man. fucking God. God damn it. Dude. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's wartime. Boom, 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 right? Niggas want to see blood. And, and I was conflicted because, one, I know my heart, you know what I mean? And, like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that I've just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way. But the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. Oh, it does. So I say all see that good to say, music. Want to see good sparring? In my spirit of trying to like get this music out, God I ain't see. gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back, and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel. That shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight. Is in the midst of me doing that and, and, and that Christ. shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is so one of the cringe. greatest motherfuckers that ever touched so a fucking cringe. microphone? So cringe. What? Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. So I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bruh. That was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it make, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Don't hurt me. Shot, mm. Take your best shot chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. So, the reason why this is so disappointing is that in my opinion, I don't even think the Kendrick Lamar verse on like that on the fucking Metro and Future album was that vicious to be this scared. Because if that track was vicious in that it really went at Drake and J. Cole and anybody else, then I can understand why he'd have these reservations after dropping quite a tentative kind of clapback. But I don't think it was that vicious really. If anything, there's an argument to be had for if Drake and J. Cole both ignored that verse and just continued on, yes, to some hip-hop purists out there, maybe myself included, they might have lost, lost some points because they didn't re clap back or reply, but it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It really wouldn't. If they both would have just pretended like it didn't happen and just kept it moving, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Because we have said it before, like, you know, the Drake thing, it's not as if Drake only has to go back at fucking... Kendrick he also has to basically get back at Rick Ross he has to get back at Future he has to get back at Travis Scott maybe even Nav right he's got a long list of people to get through in that 
you know, in the fucking back in the hullabaloo of all that Kendrick stuff, a lot of people have basically chose sides, quote unquote. So he has to kind of get out a lot of people and he hasn't really clapped back directly in a long time. If, unless you want to count the stuff he did that fucking, you know, um, red dot laser, whether that, that laser beam fucking song is with him and J. Cole. Um, so it's surprising that J. Cole is so scared because that's what I get from this mostly. I get from this apology from J. Cole is just fear. Like he's really worried at, at the prospect of what Kendrick Lamar could say back to him, which is to me the complete opposite of hip hop. Because if somebody disses you, it doesn't really matter if they win. You have to just spar back. You have to just display and demonstrate your, you know, lyrical ability. It's not really about you winning or not. Yes, obviously it hurts if you lose. I get it. But it's more so about you being there. It's like battle rap. It's the same thing too. Battle rap, the biggest sin in battle rap is mostly if you fluff your line and if you get your lines, which is equivalent to him saying sorry. No one really kind of gets too crazy if you lose, you know, it's a clean sweep and you lose all three rounds. It can happen. There are great MCs and rappers all around the world that could probably tear the heads off of some of our favorite battle rappers in the world. It kind of is what it is. But at least you tried. At least you put your fucking... At least you were in the fucking Coliseum sparring with the next guy. If your head gets chopped off, it is what it is. But it's the fact that J. Cole has waved the white flag before Kendrick can even reply. And after he replied back with the most soft, softest, I thought at the time it was a precursor to a really heavy diss. So I was happy with it. Plus hearing J. Cole kind of put put sowing seeds in the heads of hip-hop fans around the world by questioning Kendrick Lamar's discography and it turning into a big debate it was actually quite fun because we all know deep down Kendrick Lamar is fucking great he's one of the greats he's got maybe a flawless discography but to have J. Cole a legit rapper a legit artist in the scene put sows a, sowing seeds of doubt in your head by telling you oh one of his, you know, the second one was a flop. This one was a this, this, all of that. It was a quite a fun time. I'm not going to lie, this past couple of days. And obviously, J. Cole wasn't the most, um, he wasn't the one that got the most vitriol from Kendrick on that, like that tune anyway. So the fact that he would come out and clap back at Kendrick before Drake did, it gave a lot of bonus points. Even if it was tentative, even if it was a little bit, you know, comatose, it was a little bit shy, it was a little bit scary. At least he did it. He gained, he, he gained a lot of bonus points off of that, especially doing it, packaging it with like a EP before you drop your album during your fucking festival. Sick. We're all rating it, right? Then he comes out and undoes all of that by getting on stage and publicly waving his fucking white flag. It's beyond pathetic because it shows that instead of, instead of demonstrating how much of a great lyricist he is he's way more scared about the prospect of Kendrick revealing some secrets that he doesn't want out there I think I mentioned in a stream when I did a random show it makes me think this apology because of how immensely um, private J. Cole is he doesn't want anybody to know anything about him that he doesn't put out there so if you're a rapper if you're an artist or if you're in the industry I'm sure there are things that you know about these people that the regular person doesn't know so he's probably more worried about Kendrick coming back and saying things about him and his private life or his friends, past relationships, maybe some secret child that he doesn't want to be put out there. He's more worried about that. So that's why he's trying to preempt the Kendrick reply, you know, appeal to his better nature, kind of do the whole sympathy thing in the hope that that guy doesn't go in and kind of try and completely destroy him by saying something incredibly over the line, quote unquote. That's what it seems like, which again is completely anti hip hop to be that worried about somebody that you're willing to wave the white flag. It's fucking pathetic. It really fucking is. And it's unfair too to the fans like myself because it now taints your listener experience of J. Cole because he's doing it for his own mental health and all this nonsense, which again, I've said it previously before in this podcast that I think the whole mental health thing has been one of the worst things to happen to society in general. People basically self-diagnosing themselves um, with having mental health issues when it's just you going through a crisis of confidence, um, you going through a downtime, you maybe not being in the best of moods because you're eating like shit, you're sleeping like shit. Now it's all being fucking attributed to mental health and aligning with your spirit. And your, it's all this nonsense, waffle, wah-wah, soft-ass shit. 
that doesn't really need to be spoken about in public because if you are really going through some mental health issues and you are really struggling mentally the last thing you want to do is start speaking about it you know on social media online with random people who are going to give you random you know um random information random feedback that is completely um you know that doesn't have any relevancy to what you're going through that's almost destructive that doesn't really help you it, you wouldn't do that so this whole conversation is fucking kaput and i absolutely hate it and this is what we're kind of seeing now we're seeing the results of this you know self-diagnosis culture with this guy basically inventing all these reasons why he shouldn't be going back at kendrick and making it seem like he's a threat to his life it's like bro his fucking record or his feature on that metro track and future track wasn't that fucking vicious your reply back to him was the softest most fucking you know wearing helmets while you do boxing type of affair ever it really isn't that deep just write your raps record your disc record back stand toe to toe with fucking drake and go from there and if you're drake how does it make you feel how does it make you feel if you're drake you've just been on tour you've had j cole come out and do a series of dates with you during your tour you've been very grateful for his friendship um you know both personally and i guess career wise you've given him his flowers on stage you've you know basically he's made it known i guess in some way shape or form that he's team drake even though he's also caught with kendrick and now suddenly he's here waving a white flag what does this mean does this mean that j cole is also team kendrick also I don't know, but either way, it's incredibly disappointing. And the sad thing is about it is that if you listen to J. Cole's recent, the, the EP, the little thing that he just dropped, right? Might delete later. The really sad thing is that the, al the EP, the album, whatever, it's really good. There's actually a track on there called 3001. That's a couple of records before the seven minute drill. That might be one of his best, you know, demonstrations of rap in a while in terms of a track. Like he's absolutely skating across that entire fucking record. So that's all lost now. That's all forgotten because of the seven, seven minute drill, you know, was the one that got everyone's attention. And now because of this fucking dumbass apology, you can't look at him the same way anymore. And, you know, people are now blaming Ariana Lennox for this because he obviously um, hangs out with her a lot and she's somebody that's very in tune with her emotions and whatever it may be. People are blaming the fact that he's not really involved, like he's not an active artist in terms of dropping all the time. He's done a lot of features, obviously, in the last, you know, 18 months or so. But in terms of projects, he's been a bit MIA. So maybe this is all on purpose. Maybe the fact that he is quite private and he does kind of move to the beat of his own drum, maybe he doesn't enjoy actually partaking in like the helter skelter, mainstream beef, whatever thing. He doesn't want to do it. He just wants to be left alone to do his own thing. But then the funny thing is, or the interesting or the annoying thing is that he wants to do that. But then when he gets on records, he's always reminding you of just how great of an MC he is and how no one could touch him with this malarkey. And I'm wondering to myself now, like, can, does he have the right to say that anymore? Does J. Cole have the right to ever talk about how amazing a rapper he is when he was given the opportunity to spar on the best rappers in the world uh, in, current, in, in current times and he chose to wave his white flag? Can you ever talk with that level of bass in your voice anymore now that we know you wave the white flag? Is that ever possible? I personally don't think so. So he's basically fucked his career because he was afraid of a reply. A momentary reply that probably wouldn't have really st stood the test of time like most this record red record especially nowadays even if it did expose certain things so what the new cycle only lasts about a week if that what was really damaging like what is what is he actually scared of it can't be just the words it has to be what the words are it has to be but still very disappointing being a kendrick being sorry being a jake hall fan and if anything now we know what kendrick was talking about when he says fuck the big three it's just big me that's what he meant because on one side you've got Drake who's incredibly popular um, and probably somebody who probably doesn't feel like he owes Kendrick a reply doesn't want to he doesn't even seem like he's scared he just doesn't he just doesn't give a fuck he's making too much money he's selling out arenas he's on tour his music always when it drops it doesn't you know crazy amount of numbers first week people love him he just doesn't care anymore you know what I mean? Um, this kind of battle stuff is mostly like a backpacker, hip hop head type of thing, like I'm into. But in the grand scheme of things, no one really actually probably cares. That's why he probably doesn't care. But in the Kendrick side of things, so in the J. Cole side of things, he clearly does care. He's an MC. He's a rapper. He's a rapper's rapper. I think out of the all three of them, I'd probably say J. Cole's probably the best all round rapper of the all three. If you had to kind of, you know, rate them. So he definitely knows what's on the horizon when J. Cole, when Kendrick does get back into the booth, but. 
I don't know, man. I found it really disappointing. It was really saddening to see. And if anything, it's a reminder that hip hop has unfortunately changed for the worst. And it's never going to go back now. I think most of these artists are comfortable. They're making tons of money. They've got incredible levels of fame. They don't need to do anything, you know? And when anybody's required, and whenever somebody requests them to do something kind of outside of their remit, they are always going to turn it down because it's not comfortable because it's not easy um, because it's not the thing that's the lowest hanging fruit they'd much rather just do that and I can understand why again I'd prefer it if that wasn't the case because in my head I thought this battle the really good thing about it would be this wouldn't be the disc records it'd be the fact that it would push each artist's pen it would push Kendrick's pen to be as vicious as possible it pushed Kendrick and, Jake and Drake's pen to have a good enough clap back that people will say oh they're actually pushing you know or keeping up with Kendrick because everyone thinks Kendrick is the fucking best rapper ever it would have been great for us fans we would have got the best music we would have got the best verses it would have been fucking awesome and these guys are rubbing us off it because they're just too rich and famous this is basically where we're at they're too rich and famous to beef they can't be bothered so they'd rather just wave the white flag and us fans get left you know now wondering what we do like imagine all the j cole fans that were out on social media defending seven minute drill because when it initially dropped everybody was quite underwhelmed but then ken you know j cole fans had to like you know convince themselves that seven minute drill was a worthy enough reply it was good it was great even though you know j cole sounded like he didn't really want to do it on a track even from the first fucking verse he sounded like he didn't want to be there and then all of a sudden you're trying to defend it. People are trying to, people are coming around to the idea. Okay, cool. It's true. Maybe J. Cole was right about him being overrated and, you know, his albums weren't that good. Maybe he's right. And then the next day, literally the next day, J. Cole comes out on stage and says, I'm sorry, Kendrick. <laughs> like it must be so horrible being a, being a J. Cole fan. You're defending him all, this whole weekend, fighting for your lives. And your fucking hero comes out and says, Kendrick, I'm sorry. Kendrick, I apologize. Kendrick, lo siento. Kendrick this <laughs> oh honestly man I can't believe it I really can't believe it what a shocking state of affairs really shocking state of affairs but again no surprise hip-hop has completely changed for the worse unfortunately and now we've got all these soft ass actions we've got people online co-signing it you've got Charlemagne talking his nonsense about mental health and all this or not it's like no this isn't the time to pedal all that shit this is just a pl and the thing about this is more frustrating too to end it these guys don't have any street beef. Even though Kendrick has said some foul things insinuating about people, this is not street stuff. There's no goons involved. There's no fucking, you know, whatever. It's just three guys who are all at the top of the game trying to compete to see who's number one, number one for real when it comes to spitting. It's not even a fucking street thing. So the threats of all that stuff is completely off the table. So the fact that, you know, J. Cole got on stage looking that scary, looking that rattled was really odd because it's not a street thing. No one's, no one's looking for anybody in real life you know, from that free. It's just like, come on. It's just a nonsense. But I guess, you know, he did what he needed to do for his spirituality, for his peace of mind. Um, which is fucking crazy to admit on stage that, you know, Kendrick Lamar is giving you fucking, uh, he's giving you nightmares. Like, uh, you know, this is wild to admit another man's giving you nightmares. But I guess if it's happening, it's happening, isn't it? You can't deny it. You can't just ignore it. You have to kind of just recognize it and kind of go from there. But again, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. But what can we do? What can we do?